today our Space Marines are going to be pretending they're playing Call of Duty, as they're going to be setting up some sentry guns on the field. Hello and welcome back to Auspex Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. Today we're back to looking at the Space Marine Forge World datasheets and we're going to be having a look at the Tarantula Sentry Gun and the Tarantula Air Defense Battery. We're going to be focusing on the Space Marine rules for these today. I know they can be available for the Imperial Guard as well. I'm sure we'll get onto them at some point, but we're going to be focusing on their use in the Adeptus Astartes today. In this video we'll take a look over their datasheets, any obvious buffs and synergies, and how I would use them on the tabletop. In the background, the Tarantula is a simple automated sentry gun, infused with a basic machine spirit that can allow it to be placed itself in different firing modes, to defend certain locations, intercept enemy incoming reserves, or perhaps engage and destroy enemy armour within its range. Unlike normal sentries, there is no room for human error, and these turrets can be deployed to defend against some surprise attack angles when the manpower of an army is stretched. So let's see what they can do in-game. For the Space Marines, the Tarantula Sentry Gun is a fast attack choice for Codex Space Marines. You can buy one and three of the guns within the same fast attack choice, and at base each one is armed with a twin heavy bolter. They'll cost you 37 points in this armament, and they can also trade out their heavy bolters for either a twin LAS cannon, a single multi-melter, or a twin assault cannon. A LAS cannon turret will cost you 60 points, a multi-melter turret will cost you 42 points, and a twin assault cannon turret will cost you a mighty 64 points. Now the sentry guns have an interesting sat line with a movement of zero, no weapon skill, meaning that it can't attack in close combat, a ballistic skill of 4+, plus, strength 4, toughness 5, 4 wounds, no attacks, leadership 10, and a 3 plus save. So they are somewhat durable point for point, but obviously they have no tactical flexibility when deployed. I believe that the gun does have Angels of Death as per the Forge World FAQ, meaning that it will be able to access combat doctrines for a little bit of extra firepower in the Devastator Doctrine, and it does have the Chapter keyword, meaning that it can gain Chapter Tactics. The guns have some limiting special rules to dictate their static and lack of crew nature. They're immobile, which means they can't move and they can't fight in the fight phase. Enemy models will automatically hit in the fight phase and don't need to make hit rolls but interestingly they can still shoot when enemy models are within 1 inch of it, and friendly units can still target enemy units that are within 1 inch of the Tarantula sentry gun, as they're understandably a little bit less cautious about hitting guns rather than their own troops. This is pretty handy, as being a mobile can mean that it can be a bit of a target for being charged and wrapped and trapped, so this prevents the gun from blocking line of sight to enemy units that happen to touch it base to base. It also has the automated artillery special rule, meaning that if it's equipped with heavy bolters, it must target the nearest infantry model in the shooting phase, and if it's equipped with twin LAS cannons, it must target the nearest non-infantry model in the shooting phase. It's kind of interesting on the LAS cannons, as there's plenty of interesting things that aren't infantry. It might not necessarily want LAS cannons firing at things like Tau drones, bikers, or swarms, for example, none of which are necessarily the thing that you really want to be ploughing your LAS cannons into. It doesn't sound like the multi-melter or twin assault cannons have actually any targeting restrictions at all, which does make me wonder how close the rules writers were really paying attention to the rules of this model when they were designing it at the start of 8th edition. It also doesn't look like it's been FAQ'd, so it looks like your assault cannons and multi melkser can target any unit within range. A slight problem with that is that being immobile and only having very short range, they might be very limited in terms of the targets that they can choose to shoot at, which is somewhat of a limiting factor. Overall, I think probably the strongest choice is the Twin Heavy Bolter. It has decent range, and shooting at infantry is usually going to be reasonable, even if the firepower is pretty inflexible, and it does only hit on fours. The last cannons will probably be my next best choice, because at least they have good range, and they certainly will put some reasonable firepower down range, particularly if they're combined with certain chapter tactics, such as Salamanders or Master Artisans. However, they do sort of run the risk of being very stupid and trying to target things that they really don't want to be shooting at, like I said, Tau drones and swarms and things. The assault cannon isn't awful, but it's just a bit limiting with its very short range, meaning that opponents can easily stay out of range of the thing, or just choose to eliminate it before they do get in range, but I guess it could provide a bit of a deterrent to enemies just randomly charging into your deployment zone. I guess at least this one can pick and choose its targets, even if it is a bit pricey. If we move on to look at the Tarantula Air Defense Battery now, this guy has essentially the same profile but is a little bit pricier at 70 points per model. Again, it's a fast attack choice and it's equipped with Tarantula Air Defense Missiles. These are heavy D3, strength 8, AP-2 and damage D3 affairs, so a bit underwhelming compared with an actual missile launcher and they do only hit on 4s. 
Like many air defense options, they add plus one to hit when they're targeting fly units and subtract one to hit if they're targeting enemies that can't fly. These guys have the fully automated weapons rule in which they must target the nearest enemy unit that can fly, and if no flying targets are visible, they must target again the nearest non-flying enemy unit. In all honesty, this is quite inflexible. You might well have enemy units that can fly that you really don't want to be shooting that's the closest, although they will at least do some damage against most targets. The thing is, an average of two damage D3 missiles isn't really going to cut it in terms of actual damage output, particularly given the limitations and low ballistic skill. So I'm really not that much of a fan of these things for the amount of points they cost, which is pretty high. So, in terms of buffs on the battlefield... What are the best things that we can do for Tarantula batteries? Firstly, Imperial or Crimson Fist could be good for the Heavy Bolter Armed Sentry Gun, giving them a few extra shots, and Ignore's Cover certainly doesn't hurt either. We already mentioned Salamanders or Master Artisans could be pretty handy for the variants with fewer shots, such as the Air Defense, the Last Cannons or the Multi Melter. Iron Hands or Raven Guard could perhaps make them a little bit more durable, either giving them a Feel No Pain save or getting them in cover respectively, which certainly isn't a bad thing. In general, I don't think that they're going to be worth giving too much character support to. They're only very cheap units with reasonably low firepower output, but if you can get them in any character buffing auras, then it's not a bad thing. In particular, the chapter master aura would be a significant leg up when they have only a ballistic skill of 4+, meaning that 4 rerolls to hit are actually going to make them into a bit more of a credible source of firepower. In general, I wouldn't typically bother with stratagems for them, as they're just very cheap little units. You're almost always going to be getting more bang from your buck from stratagems elsewhere. So how would I run Tarantula platforms on the battlefield then? I think their best use in a competitive style Space Marine army is to have them run as fast attack choices that are very cheap and perhaps could be used to fill brigade slots. Their main competition for this role is the attack bike, who is also 37 points with that heavy bolter. Now in general I do tend to see people using the attack bikes more than the Tarantula batteries, mainly because they have great mobility and that twin bolt gun as well, and have at least some close combat ability meaning that they can be a bit of a harassment threat and maybe go and score midfield objectives. Having said that, the Tarantula will put out slightly more heavy bolter shots, particularly if the attack bike is on the move, so you would get a little bit more firepower out of this thing, even if it's pretty limited into what it's actually going to target. If I wanted to try and run these in-game, I'd be wanting to deploy them somewhere with a good field of fire, somewhere that the opponent can't just hide out of line of sight from them potentially in places where they can screen out enemy units from coming in from deep strike, somewhere at the edges of the army, particularly as if they do catch up with them, you can still shoot at enemy models. They could be some reasonably annoying little screening units that will damage the enemy army until they're dealt with, and might distract them from dealing with your more serious threats. Naturally, in-game you don't really have much choice as to what they're actually going to do, unless you've given them things like assault cannons or multi melters and they'll basically just operate as they're programmed from after you've made the one decision of where they're actually going to be deployed. In terms of their raw unit stats and damage output, I'm afraid I don't think that they're massively competitive in anything else but filling out the cheapest fast attack brigade slots. Space Marines just have quite a lot of efficient firepower to offer right now. As always with Forge World models, I'll be certainly interested to see what Games Workshop do with these guys when they start redoing the Forge World indexes as they said they would, so it might be interesting to see where they go in the future. If you've had any experience using these guys, or any tricks or tips that I've missed, please let me know down in the comments. They're certainly an interesting little unit that functions quite unlike much of what we have to offer in the Space Marines arsenal. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where we have new 40k content coming out every single day. And if you'd like to help out the channel, I do have an Element Games affiliate link in the description below, where you can buy Warhammer and Games Workshop products at a slight discount if you live in the UK. If you do buy anything after clicking through that link, some of the profits goes to Allspets Tactics, without costing you any more at all, so if you were thinking about buying some models sometime in the near future, and you wanted to support the channel, then that can be an easy way to do so. I personally do recommend Element, I've never had any trouble with any of my orders from them. In any case, thank you very much for listening, and I will hope to see you guys next time.